Hey everybody, welcome to Saving Green's Homestead. My name is Keisha, and if this is your first time watching one of my videos, I welcome you. You guys, I just wanted to walk around and show you some of the pretty flowers that are starting to bloom in my garden. And some other pretty interesting features of things that's happening. Can you believe those flowers are growing out of these little tiny black plastic uh, flower pots? That's so pretty. I'm gonna be going around and I'm gonna be tickling tomato flowers today. So like, for instance, I have this tomato flower right here and it's open and I just tickle them. <laughs> and I do that on all of them and that helps increase the fruit production on them. Helps them to pollinate and I have more fruit from it. And I noticed that a lot of my tomato plants on Tomato Road here are flowering. So while I'm tickling these, I'm gonna show you some amazing things that are happening in my garden right now. Um, they're just, or just pretty things, just interesting things that are going on in my garden right now. So let's get started. While everything is starting to come up in this bed um, and all of my arch garden beds, um, I wanted to show you guys that I planted some flowers. I'm just hoping that they take um, and that they bloom. But I planted a row of flowers in here. And then I already planted nasturtiums in these beds. And as I was walking through here yesterday, I noticed that this one actually put on a flower. Isn't that pretty? I notice also that I have a lot of um, sunflowers that are volunteering in this bed, along with this other bed over here. I have a lot of sunflowers that are volunteering in here, and I knew that was going to happen. But check this out, you guys. I took off, I cut off a piece of my hollyhocks, um, my hollyhock flowers, and I stuck them down in this bed. And look at, they are trying to bloom. The little pink buds there are trying to bloom. I didn't think it would do that. Um, it's like a, you can see the tip of it over here where it's pushing up out of the ground. But I didn't think it would still bloom uh, once it was cut. And it is. That's pretty crazy to me. Here are the hollyhock plants. I cut off a stem that looked similar to this one right here, and I buried it in that bed. And the flowers, the buds still opened up. <laughs> That's funny to me. It's crazy that it would do that. I wanted to show you guys too. Look how big these apples are getting. They are getting big and there's a lot of them on this tree. I have a fig growing on my fig tree here. At first I was looking, I didn't see any figs yet. So I was gonna say, I don't have no figs yet, but I do have a fig. Cool. And then I notice on this apple tree, I have apples. I have a lot of apples on this one too. And a lot of apples on this one over here. So I'm excited for apple season this year. I think apple season is gonna be really good. And then I noticed that my blackberries are putting on flowers. 
Can you see the little buds? They have a lot of little flower buds on here. So I might actually get some fruit this year on my blackberry. It looks nice and healthy and good. I haven't noticed any flowers yet on my um, raspberries, but they came back and they came back pretty good. And they do produce a good amount of raspberries for me. But then I noticed, look at this. I noticed that my Marionberry is making a comeback. It did not grow anything last season. No leaves or nothing. I thought I killed it. But it's still alive. It woke up. So I'm happy for that. I just want to show you guys an overview of this yard. So, you see all of these weeds and stuff. All of this. Next week won't be here. I had to go on ahead and hire someone to come in and help me with this because it's a lot. I'm trying to make sure I'm planting out stuff um, getting beds ready. Um, it's just a lot of work. And so I'm not able to do all of this by myself. So I had to hire some help. And we're going to start getting the rest of these beds ready. But the first thing on the list is to get rid of all these weeds. I don't know if you guys, these, um, what are they called? Foxtail weeds are so bad. And I have a dog and you guys seen my cats and this guy <laughs> with all this fur. And I can't even walk through this mess and my house slippers without getting a lot of foxtails attached to my shoes. Look at this. So I know it's not good for him. He's probably got some stuck in his fur. I'm going to have to check him out, but I need to get rid of all that stuff. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So when I make my next video, should be some really big changes that you'll see in this yard. So, okay, let me take you out front, show you some things that I wanted to show you out front. So out here in the front, I wanted to show you guys, look at these. The person who bought tomato plants from me dropped these off. These three are dragon fruit and they're different varieties of dragon fruit. If you remember a couple of videos ago, I talked about how I have this dragon fruit and even if it puts on flowers, I don't think I would get fruit because there needs to be two different um, dragon fruit plants in order to pollinate each other. So I wouldn't get any fruit, but he brought me those. So I'm excited. I'm gonna get those potted up and, and put in place and see what happens. Maybe I'll get fruit this time. Also in my last video, I said something to you guys. I was telling you about this uh, pineapple that I had growing in here. My pineapple plant survived the winter because these other succulents grew in around it and insulated it from the cold. And there it is. I cleared everybody out of there so it can start getting some sun. And hopefully, it will produce a fruit for me this year. This plant in particular is three years old and I just started him from a pineapple top that, um, off a of pineapple that I had bought. Um, if you remember, I did a tea video on pineapple skin tea 
and the benefits of it. And that was the pineapple top that I grew from it. So moving on, I wanna show you guys these potatoes. And I didn't catch it in time, but it actually flowered. The flower died now, but this one actually flowered. Now the plants can put on potatoes underground without there being flowers. But if your potato plants flower, that's a good indication that there are some potatoes growing under there. And I think this is a ladybug larvae. And I have a lot of them around because there's a lot of um, aphids that I noticed. And so I'm happy to have those guys. And then my purple potatoes are still sprouting. There's more popping up in there. And none in this one yet, but I have carrots that volunteered in there. <laughs> okay, you guys, I am tripping right now. Okay, you see these two plastic clear bottles? Well, last season I put uh, potatoes in these containers. I put one potato in each container so that I could work uh, an experiment that I was trying to do. I first learned about this one procedure and I thought, oh, I want to try that. And so <laughs> I planted the potatoes to use and I put them in these containers specifically um, for the purpose of the experiment. And well, I never did get around to doing the experiment. And so, you know, months down the line, the potatoes died and I never checked in the dirt to see if anything ever grew in there. I mean, cause it's just a jar with just a little, a bottle with just a little bit of soil in the bottom there. But I come out here and look at that. There is a new potato plant. Look, the bottle won't even open. I see, because it's been so long. But look, there's a potato plant growing out of there. So somewhere in there, I thought the potatoes just rotted. That's my, my opinion. I thought it rotted. And so I was like, well, that's not going to work. <laughs> it grew a, a whole year later. It grew another potato plant. I don't know, I'm just standing here so amazed right now and in shock <laughs> by it. I guess I'm going to go ahead and use this potato plant for the experiment that I was going to do. And if I do do it, you guys will be the first ones to know what that experiment is. I will share the whole process with you and talk about it in another video. But I am just flabbergasted right now that that potato didn't rot. Like, it grew plants but little ones just like that last year and then they died. And so I thought, oh, well, that's the end of that. I guess not. Well, you guys, my tickling <laughs> adventures today uh, is over. I went around and I tickled all these tomato flowers and now it's time for me to get things watered up and and set. I'm so excited for this garden this season. Um, and I can't wait to get my first harvest off of these tomato plants. It seems like yesterday since I put these in the ground, but it's actually been a little over a month and they're doing fantastic. And I can't wait. You guys, I made a really cute video a couple of years ago, giving all the details on why I tickle my tomatoes. So I will link that video in the description so that you guys can go back and look at it. It's very funny. But um, that way you'll know why I do what I do and it'll give more information 
about that and also how I trim my tomato plants. So I guess I will be seeing you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and as always, God bless.